DIY the grappler back on the scene again with another video laying a third slab. This time I'm just gonna be giving, you know, going and giving my experience. I'm gonna be giving a little, uh, trying a little experimental method here, you know, still at war with these roots. I can't stand these roots, but um, yeah, so I'm back. So if you wanna see the process of a step-by-step, -step, either I had the resurface or I had the, you know, the step-by-step -step method of how to lay the dry pour with the mortar on top, you can go ahead and check the other videos. So this time I did a little bit experimental uh, method here where I did a portion wet pour and I did a portion dry pour, you know, so seeing how that worked out. So, you know, I ended up mixing here. So this, man, this particular situation, I was here for about like 13, 14 minutes. So, you know, they say knowledge comes from experience. And um, so to all like, you know, I appreciate all the comments. They're cool, man. I got like some high level people commenting. I have some DIYers commenting. I got some people like, hey, you know, that's no good. Then I got people saying, hey, man, thank you so much. So I just want to give my experience. So the to the to the, you know, the other people, the higher level people saying, hey, man, it's easier to go ahead and just lay down a wet pour. It's easier this way. So I didn't know. So I had no answer to it. But they say, you know, knowledge comes from experience. So what I did was, you know, I laid some, uh, I mixed it up. So right here, what I did was I, I put some old concrete pavers inside, which I actually did in the first slab too, trying to get rid of the pavers, using it as like a base. And I just ended up filling all the blanks. So that's what that big kind of square is, you know, off kind of square in the middle is, is some concrete pavers in there. I did it in the first slab, solid. I seen someone else do it where they threw some old concrete, you know, even though people throw recycled concrete and they throw different things inside there, rocks and, you know, as a filler. So that's what I did, you know. But anyway, when it comes to this, um, wet pour man it's harder i you know i tried it i didn't do it completely i can just imagine if i went complete and i can see how like i'm right here i'm trying to use a mag float and play with it a little bit and see the finish so when it comes to the finish of the wet pour like i understand it's like a huge process you know even though i didn't even attempt it right here i just i was done at, after a certain point boom i'm like all right back you know to the dry pour to save the day just for the diyers so when it comes to this wet pour i've been studying a lot and I'm like, depending on how big the slab is or, or what the job is or whatever, you know, you could do it alone. If it's small, if it's bigger, you're going to need some help. But man, that thing was uh, backbreaking. So I put, you know, two bags of 60 pound, you know, dry concrete inside the bucket. I mixed it. I'm already past that, that portion in this video, Pat mixed it. So what happened was when I went to scoop it up, that thing was extra heavy. I only have like, I forgot what it was, like seven or eight second, seconds of me mixing it. But I was there for about 13 minutes mixing that. So, and then I was getting, I was starting to get frustrated. Like the, the my drill was like, I didn't know how to use it. So I'm going in and out. It's like, you know, I'm, I think I'm going too hard. I'm going too slow. And then it wasn't mixing all the way. And then it mixed. And then I finally poured it. So the 60 pound back, like, and I work out, no, I'm doing my push ups, my pull ups. I'm, I'm working out and stuff. I, I lift weights, you know? So, but the 60 pound bags are heavy enough, you know, cause you're at awkward angles, pouring them in there. But then when you add water to it, it gets more heavy. And I look, check this out. I'm not, I'm, t I'm talking more or less for like, say the older, you know, lady that wants to do this or the older gentleman that wants to do this at the house by themselves, that thing gets kind of heavy. I can deal with it, but you you know, you're 50, 60, 70 years old and you're trying to lift up this bucket and then pour it in there. Then you're working against time. You're kind of rushed for time here. So what I did was I ended up, you know, going ahead and, and, and laying down some, uh, you know, I did it in different little patterns here. So, you know, I, like I said, I'm just talking at this point. I put the dry pour down. First, I wet the, wet the ground, put the dry pour down, wet it, you know, put the dry pour down. Then I kind of wedged in the, um, the concrete pavers to kind of take out any extra air pockets. So they kind of wedged in there with the dry, dry concrete, wet it down. Then I went ahead and did the, um, then I mixed it up, poured it in there. So anyway, real quick before I forget. So this mortar mix, I was actually wrong. The mortar mix is always here to save the day for me personally. I'm like, man, mortar mix here to save the day. The mortar mix, I was actually wrong. It's actually 6,500 PSI. So I was thinking 6,000 PSI. It's actually 6,500 PSI, meaning uh, pounds per square inch. So it's actually strong. It always comes in for me to save the day. I accidentally use this. I got this method from uh, Teddy Zane. And I asked him, and then and then he was like, oh, man, I actually um, accidentally came across it too. But that's how things happen. That's how things get innovated when you kind of stumble across stuff. So, man, I, uh, I'm not, you know, I really appreciate that he stumbled across it 
and then shot it to me. And then I'm kind of like, all right. And then I actually grabbed the wrong mortar mix. He, he was using a repair mortar mix. And I was, you know, I was so new with it. I'm like, all right, so let me grab some mortar mix. And thankfully, I ended up grabbing a strong mortar mix. Because if you're thinking that for regular mortar, it's only about, you know, I, I you know, I was doing my research. They're like, I was like, what's the strongest mortar? They're like, oh, like 2,500 PSI, 3,000. So I'm like, dang, this mortar mix I'm using and the one that Teddy Zane is using, it's 6,000 PSI or over. So these aren't regular mortar mixes. I, I seen the other guy. There was another guy that mentioned, he was like, this is pretty much like concrete. I had commented on his thing and, um, you know, he was a high level, like really experienced guy. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't like it. You know what I'm saying? They're not really liking it. And I do understand, you know, I do understand that they don't like it. And, uh, you know, it's not their thing. So I'm waiting on this other guy that that's, uh, uh, he's like a professor. This guy's like, he's not like his information. He's not really talking about like laying concrete or how to trial it or edge it or mag float it. Or he's, he's talking about like, actually like the scientific, he's the only guy that I really, really seen that's talking about like the scientific chemical reactions, like the time frames. So one thing I did come across before I, it, it leaves my mind is that he says the longer you leave the forms on the better that helps it, you know, helps it cure more. That's actually probably where I got the burlap method from. I believe I'm not sure, but I think, the burlap and the extra curing. This is probably where I got, you know, that information from was this guy. I'm, he's a professor and he has a PhD. I'm not sure if he's like a professor and he teaches about concrete at a college. I think he, I believe he's in Oklahoma city, but, um, anyway, I'd commented on his thing and I'm waiting on uh, a return for him to see what he thinks about the dry port. If it is, you know, if it can reach that same strength, you know, there's another guy that did the, that did a, a experiment and the dry pour ended up looking a little bit stronger than the wet pour. So I'm still in this mix and match of like, how is this going to go? I'm still trying to get some information. But after this experience, even though I only did pretty much like a half of a, 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 a wet pour and then I did the rest dry pour, that wet pour is definitely harder. You know, it's definitely harder. And that's all good. Like, hey, you know, I've learned many things. I, I'm learning about this right now. And if I, if I learn how to wet pour it, I can do it for sure. I could, I could, you know, make it tight and have a good finish, broom finish with the edges and all that stuff. But real quick, look, boom. So there is no rocks, you know, with this, you know, because, you know, with the, with this mortar mix, 6,500 6, PSI at the top, because pretty much it's concrete is made of sand, cement, and aggregates. So this particular mortar mix is sand and uh, cement. You know, it is, you know, a tan color, which I end up liking. You know, it all comes, you know, stumbled across it. You know what, Tesla, I forgot what it was. He tried to invent, not Tesla, it was the other guy, Nikolai. Was it Nikolai Tesla? No, the other guy. You guys can correct me because it's the internet world where the dude that invented the light bulb, I forgot his name is missing me right now. But he tried like 6,000 times. Edison, was it Thomas Edison? He tried the, uh, he tried like what, 6,000 times. And then he ended up finally becoming, you know, coming around with the, um, the light bulb. Michael Jordan, I'm sure if you guys heard that, he missed 9,000 shots and he wasn't this great in high school. And then he, so when it comes to this stuff, you know, dang, the video's already done. Um, you know, you can check out the process if you want to check the other one. I'm here. Uh, I, I want to start calling the the curing process. If you can notice all that dirt on the second slab, this is the reason why I'm tr why I'm trying to do this. I told myself, chill out, hold on. The, the, I don't want to mess up the other one. If that jet stream would have hit my new pour, then all that mortar mix would have came up even though it's fast setting it goes there so i was like let me chill out let me not get too crazy but if you see all that dirt that's the reason i want to make this floating path is because it's so you know this is like a newer house not newer house but to us it's a newer house so we're trying to fix it up and so all that dirt like i said my, my wife was you know tripping pretty much that i would track that dirt into the little patio there and then it'd go into the house so i'm trying to build this floating path where we can get away from that dirt and it doesn't rain much. I'm here in Florida, so our conditions are different also. We don't have freeze thaw. So we're not having water going in there, freezing, expanding, contract, you know, contracting and expanding. We're not having that happen here. So my situation might be different. So again, I'm not trying to like lead anybody a certain way. I'm just trying to share my experiences with this. I really want to dig deep and find a way to make this dry pour strong. You know, and I see a lot of people doing it, which is cool, man. Like, man, hats off to you. Some people just want to do it. You know, some people just want to do it. You know, here I'm going back to the burlap method, time for the burlap method, still watering the other two. But, you know, hats off to you, man, for trying to like, you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, for trying to do your own thing. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's an easier path, it's not being lazy or not being this. Maybe you're like, you know what? I want to get my hands dirty. I want to do something. 
you know, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. It's like a little project, a little hobby that people like to do. And, and I like it too. I'm actually having fun also. So what I'm trying to do is like, just make sure that I make it strong. Cause I really want to do a driveway. I haven't seen anybody do a driveway yet. I might make history being the first guy to make a driveway, you know, out of this, at a dry pour and just make sure I'm, um, I had the rebar. Maybe I throw some fiber in there for extra strength. Maybe I go six inches. I talked to another contractor, uh, one of my wife's friends. He said, no, nah, you only need to go four inches. I didn't tell him about the dry pour part because I didn't want to get into this debate about the dry pour, what, you know, wet pour deal. But, you know, I might go six inches, you know, four in, probably six inches with some rebar, some fiber, some proper curing process. So here's another video of my, you know, half dry pour, half wet pour. Is a wet pour harder? Yeah. Is it more back back breaking? Yes. Well, I, with the dry pour, it takes about I'll tell you what, man, like five minutes to finish. That's it. When you're done, you roll that sucker, you start the curing process, and that's it. So the dry pour is actually easier in my experience to deal with. Now, is it stronger? That's still up for debate. That's still in research process, and uh, you know. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope, I hope this helped out. You can go ahead and check the other ones. You know, to all the people commenting, good or bad, thank you. To all the ones that are super, you know, positive, thank you. You know, and again, thanks for watching, man. I appreciate it. Some more videos will be coming out soon.